Welcome back. Every week, I start this show by saying it's the home of positive populism, and I really mean that. Yes, it's part of our job to point out the failures, the corruption, and the hypocrisy of the elite. But I've always tried to build things, not just tear them down. I've built businesses. I've worked in government to make change happen. I've argued for new policy ideas, for example, in my last book. So tonight, we're starting a new series called Positive and Practical, where we'll highlight positive, practical ideas aimed at helping you, the American people. Tonight, a look at the crippling partisan gridlock of Congress and what can be done to get things moving again. With me now, the co-chairs of the Problem Solvers Caucus, Republican Congressman Tom Reed from New York and Democratic Congressman Josh Gottheimer from New Jersey. There you are, opposite sides, trying to work together to get something done. Uh, Tom, let's start with you. Could you describe um, the, what you've been working for to try and improve the functioning of Congress to actually get things done for people and, and, and where you stand? Well, Steve, thank you, and it's great to be with you. And about a year ago, uh, Josh Gottheimer and I and the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is 48 members, strong uh, members of Congress working together to solve problems, uh, said we got to change the rules of the House so that this top-down, speaker-driven organization where one or two people control what gets to the floor of the House, the last-minute deals, the backroom deals, and what we said is we need a package of rule reforms that allow us to be legislators, to work in a bipartisan way and bring solutions that the American people need uh, to have the debate and open an honest conversation on the floor of the House. And last week, with Josh Gottheimer's great leadership on the Democratic side, Nancy Pelosi agreed to our rule reforms that will reward uh, getting legislation to the floor and have our debates so that the American people are going to be uh, the beneficiaries of it. Josh, could you tell us a little bit more specifically about what those changes are and the positive consequences we could see? Sure. So what we talked about, and Steve, thanks for having us. Uh, what we said is, how do we actually make sure when there's broad bipartisan support for legislation that can actually get to the floor for a debate and a vote? We saw in last Congresses just too often, whether it was on getting health care premiums down or trying to fix our infrastructure, things just couldn't get to the floor for a debate or a vote. And you'd have uh, extremes on both sides be able to gum things up. And what, what we said is, how we, what kind of package could we put together to change that? So now we put to, and one of the ideas is when you get 290 people co-sponsoring a piece of legislation, you can actually get it to the floor for a debate and a vote. Seems like a common sense idea given uh, that's a huge, uh, it's a super majority of the House and we think it makes common sense. And when 20 Democrats and 20 Republicans come together behind an amendment, we also mm -hmm. say, hey, why don't we give it a shot to actually debate it and vote on it on the floor? So again, things where you, especially in this era of divided government, where we can have a real debate. That's what the public really wants us to do instead of this gridlock. Yeah, I mean, it sounds great. I just want to put a challenge, a couple of challenges to each of you, Tom. The Wall Street Journal had a piece, it mentioned, they were talking about the Pelosi um, uh, story this week in terms of her election uh, as Speaker and, um, or the, the caucus election. And I talked about these, these proposals and said, but if you examine the reforms, they are essentially promises to consider the ideas of backbenchers or left-right coalitions a little more closely, which in practice will mean about 10 minutes. Um, what do you say to that? Well, I, I obviously disagree with that assessment. I appreciate the criticism, but I, I can tell you, if we don't do anything, uh, the era of one-person control, these last-minute deals, these four people making the fundamental decisions as to what policy gets to the floor of the House, uh, this is a step in the right direction. And by having the agreement from the speaker to, uh, uh, or potential speaker of Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi, agree to them, that's a huge step, Steve, and it shouldn't be discounted. It is historic right. what we were able to, to achieve. And to Josh Goddamer's leadership, kudos. Well, you know, I, I, again, repeat, good. people like Thanks, the Tom. idea of you coming together. Josh, l last quick point to you. I've seen a lot of um, commentary, sure. some quite nasty commentary, actually, saying that basically you're, this is all about empowering, from the left, criticizing you, saying this is all about empowering the GOP and you're kind of a stooge for the Republicans. Well, you know, there's certainly people who are obstructionists on both sides that actually don't want to see us come together to get things done, right? I mean, they they make a whole industry about blocking things. What we've really said is, hey, in this era right now, especially on our side, on the Democratic side, you saw how we win the, won the majority. It was all through seats in the middle. People who are, want to actually get things done on health care actually deal with infrastructure. And, and that's going to take us actually talking to each other and working together, right? You're still facing a Republican Senate and a Republican White House. So in this era, if we're going to get things done, mm -hmm. we're going to have to work together. And this will actually get debates and votes. And I, I think, really, people want us to break the gridlock, and that's what this whole package of reforms are yeah, all about. I, well, I hope so. And I do think it's, you know, just having worked in government myself, I do understand that 
some of these process things that could sound a little boring are actually really essential to making progress. But of course, the substance is really important as well. We're going to keep an eye on it and see what the problem solvers uh, get up to and hopefully check back with you. Thank you both very much for what you're doing and for it's joining us tonight. practical and pragmatic, as you, as you yeah, said. There you are, positive practical. and practical. Good to see you both. <laughs> Thank you. Positive and practical. Yeah.